My name is Todd Labrador, and uh, we're here at uh, Kedemukujik National Park, National Historic Site. <clears throat> and this area is known as Miramakedj, Miramakedji, and uh, it's the uh, Mi'kmaq encampment where we have the, uh, the wigwam. Our main goal this summer is to build the 18 and a half foot ocean going birch bark canoe. So now I'm going to lash the end with spruce root. And it's very important to, to get the end really tight because there's a lot of pressure on the ends to, to come apart once, uh, once the canoe is built. The Mi'kmaq people here in Nova Scotia, from what I've been told, use mostly black spruce. And it's, uh, I guess, the better, better route to use. And, uh, but today, for me, uh, if it's black spruce or white spruce or red spruce, um, as long as it's spruce. Mi'kmaq canoes are different than most birch bark canoes. Their shape, their ends are round, but also <clears throat> most canoes have two gunnels on each side. You have the inside gunnel and the outside gunnel. Mi'kmaq canoes has one gunnel on each side. So on the outside, we just have the birch bark wrapped around that gunnel. So the rib actually goes between the outside of the gunnel and the birch bark. And it's more of a challenge to build a canoe with one gunnel because a lot of pressure on that rib to pop through the birch bark. A lot of other canoes have the outer, outer gunnel that you don't have to worry about the rib going through because you have that piece of wood. So the gunnels for the uh, Mi'kmaq canoes usually about an inch wide and maybe an inch, inch and a half deep and that's mostly in the middle and then they taper down to the end, they get smaller as you go towards the end. Most canoes have uh, spruce roots, sort of, um, you, you'll sew a root for two inches, then you'll leave a two inch gap where the rib goes. Then you'll sew the other side of the rib, then you'll leave a two inch gap. Mi'kmaq canoe, we didn't leave any gaps. We sewed right from one end of the canoe, right through to the other end of the canoe. And the end of the rib actually pushes against all those roots. So if you don't do it properly, the force and pressure of the end of the rib can break all the, rib, uh, all the roots. So it's more of a challenge. Um, it's quite, it's very unique. It's very few people building Mi'kmaq canoes. Um, the Passamaquoddy, Penobscot, um, Ojibwe, Nishinaabe, their canoes all have two gunnels on each side. The ends are a bit different, um, but the Mi'kmaq canoe is, is, is all by itself. It's a different, there's very few other canoes throughout Canada that build similar to our canoes. Now any time in June after the fireflies come out. Our ancestors always use that as a, as a, I guess, a sign that as soon as you see fireflies at night, that means birch bark will peel easy. So this is summer bark. So we'll make a cut and uh, and we'll see if we can get a nice long sheet of bark. And uh, when I bring it down the tree, uh, my daughter will help and we kind of take it down without breaking it. Now bark will bend one way very easy, but it'll bend the other way, it won't bend the other way without breaking, so you have to be careful. Okay, reach up as high as you can.
Okay. Now, uh, now let's turn it right over that way. Just one sec. Okay. You take on the end there. Okay, just very carefully. Even if I drop it now, it should be okay, but always nice to take it down slowly. Okay. Okay. Now let's lay it in that sun strip. You can just go that way. And uh, when I lay it in the sun like that, within just a few minutes in the sun, we can flip it over and roll it up because the, the sun will heat it. <clears throat> Got this one. Oh, so turn this. Yeah, let's uh, take it right back, right up over top there, Joel. Because we're going to have to cut it right here. Watch your fingers. Yeah. So what we're going to do right now is cut it right here. Uh, right here, Joe. Right. Get a, uh, bring it out your way. There you go. Yep, right. So I'll well, just dump some more hot water on there, and that'll make it really viable. Viable, yeah. Okay, so now what we're going to do is take your one piece of bar, uh, plywood there, and one there that together a little. Let me just see. Do we have uh, yeah, let's, no, I guess that's good. So you hold on to that. And this one. We'll cut this the whole length, and then I'll add a piece on. So, uh, so we're almost to gunnel here. Huh? Yeah, the gunnel will be, yeah, right. And uh, so it's going to go up like that? Yep, that's right. A little high and then, then down a little bit. So we need pieces here. And then this is looking pretty good here. And here we got a, a split, but, but what we're going to do here is this end is going to go up. When this end goes up, that's going to go together because that's split. But in some cases, we'll cut that out really nice and put a piece of bark right in there and sew it. And then when it's covered with the gum, you, you really don't see it. When you're sewing bark for the canoe, there's uh, several different stitches you can use for depending on what you're doing. But, um, but this stitch here, we have one piece that goes straight through here. And then what we're doing is we're wrapping the other root around it. And um, the bark grain will, it'll cut easy this way, but it won't cut easy this way. So when we're sewing, if we uh, didn't have this piece underneath and I pulled tight, I could pull that right through. So this one piece prevents this root from going right through because it would break quite easy that way. So that's uh, a stitch that we use on the side here when we join the side panels. It's a very sleek design. A lot of canoes have high ends. And as I was always told by the elders, the high ends will catch the wind and the wind will blow that canoe around. Mi'kmaq canoes are really sleek designs and, and rounded and very good in the wind.
because the wind won't catch it. But from a distance, uh, you can tell if it's a Mi'kmaq canoe or, or another canoe. So a thousand years ago, if you saw a canoe in the lake, immediately you could tell by the, by the profile of that canoe if it was ours or enemy. Well done. Drawing, it's going to tip the canoe. Okay, jam. Paddles up. 